G'day mates, Argsy here, welcome back to Western Australia. I was just starting off today, we've got the uh, belly dumpers out running down to the other grain cell point, Cargills. Uh, this is the first time we've run this truck unit on auto drive. We're just keeping an eye on it to see how it is going. Uh, back at the farm, all the combines are up and going, all the grain carts are up and going, we've got the other truck running uh, to the cell point, he's just unloaded and should be heading back towards the farm by now. Uh, so it's all go. So what I'm planning for today is to get pretty much most of the harvest done. So I'll probably just leave it running for a wee while. I'm not going to show you all of that. I think we've seen quite a bit of the progress with how the uh, combines and everything are working. So what I was thinking is we'll uh, catch up with the harvest towards the end. And uh, I also want to get started on baling the straw that's coming out of the field uh, the fence are working in. So I've, uh, I've got some new equipment, I've got some balers lined up, I've got some uh, bale collectors lined up and want to show you how we're going to go about automating the uh, baling process and right through from uh, the baling, collecting the bales in the field, getting them loaded onto a truck and down to the bale sale point down here at Cargill's. So uh, without further ado I will go and uh, crack into getting all that sorted out. So I will catch you in a minute. There we go, we just caught the uh, one truck leaving as the other one arrives back and auto drive did what it was meant to do. Stopped this rig and let the other one go past. So, uh, good to see things are working. Just uh, one thing else I was going to mention, I have turned down some of my graphics settings. Uh, with everything that's going on at the moment, the frame rates were struggling just a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd turn that down and see if it helped. That does mean sort of when you're looking across the essay towards those mother bins, uh, you can't quite see the detail in the field quite as far. But uh, that's only sort of a minor graphical thing. Certainly when you think about what processing is going on at the moment. Um, but in saying that, looking at my task manager, my CPU is only running at 40% and my graphics is only running at about 40% as well. So, And memory is only 60%. So uh, it's be interesting to understand, I guess, the limitations that FarmSim have on doing something like this, because it's certainly, from the way my uh, computer's being used, is not a processing uh, power issue. And probably more to do with an optimization of the game and the way that the game can utilize the multi cores and all that different memory and data that's available through the uh, processor or different processing methods. <laughs> just about finished our first field here. So the uh, X9s are right over to the other side. The uh, one over in the background there, just so you'll be able to see it in a second. They've already finished. They managed to get out in front a little bit, not quite sure how. Uh, this one here, see is running up the end here. They're on their last pass. Another one up the top there. So I think all they have to do, those two, is run down these two rows here and we'll be all done so uh, well that's a bit of a milestone to get our first field done uh, I did change 
the grain carts to use uh, auto drive for the latter half of this field and it certainly in my opinion has been much 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 smoother than course play was for grain carts so I uh, would strongly recommend if you have the opportunity to try out auto drive for grain carts it's just uh, I've had much less issues with collisions and uh, things getting tangled up I do find there's a little bit more time with things being waiting combines waiting like we're going to see now just how long it takes for the uh, rain cart driver to pick up that that guy needs unloading even though I have set them to call at 30 percent uh, but there we go it wasn't too long for that RX uh, 9 RX to get going there so so I think what we might do uh, now that these guys are done if I just show you over the other side the uh, fence there they're almost halfway across the field might push the uh, X9 combines across and get them to do this last uh, land on the left hand side just to get this field done a whole lot quicker because uh, I'm really keen to get in and get this bailed so I'll sort that out and uh, I'll catch you again soon I had hoped to be able to get these out working but uh, getting a bit dark so we're going to leave the combines running and uh, we'll get into the straw bailing in the morning added benefit to that will mean there's no grain carts running around which could get in the way of the balers or bales getting in the way of the grain carts so uh but anyhow what we have here is three 87 series massey fergusons 8737 on the back is a 2370 massey ferguson square baler so uh, they're going to be doing all our hard work in the field bailing i do have the variable bail mod installed so uh, we're not going to be doing these at 4,000 litres each. Otherwise we would be there for a very long time picking them all up. Not to mention probably having some very interesting lag issues. Uh, but anyhow, that's our selection. We've also got the bale pusher on the front of these. So just in case there's any issues, uh, any bales in the way, they'll get pushed out of the way. But by the time uh, sun rises in the morning, uh, that straw field, or the barley field I should say, should be all finished. The uh, combines are certainly chewing through it, as you can see by the number that are needing unloading. So, uh, we'll also have one that needs a bit of fuel, so we might grab the fuel trailer and run that over on the back of the uh, Land Cruiser. <laughs> is coming along the very last run so uh, these two are empty and we're finally going to be finished so look at that he can't quite empty before he gets to the end uh, well we will go get that sorted out and then we'll get everything packed up for the night and we'll be in here bailing first thing in the morning so I'll uh, see you there soon good morning a beautiful morning here again in West Australia uh, as you would have seen from the montage we've got all the harvest finished uh, the fence are all done everything's out of the field I've still got the one mother bin in the first field with the John Deere but we don't need that out of the way today uh, we're going to get straight into setting up the balers and setting up everything I want to do for that so uh, let's go jump in the balers and get them going so here we go, all three Masseys lined up here on the uh, first of the straw rows. Now I'm just going to go through very quickly and show you how I'm going to set up the course play for this. Uh, there's a simple reason I've got three and that's because we had three combines. And 
you'll see why that means something is because we're going to use exactly the same course we had for the combines. Uh, that means that the tractor and baler will follow the combine course. Simple as that. So I don't have to change too much in here. I do have to tell which lane it, in, it is in. So obviously this is the left hand lane, center lane, right hand lane. So that's all pretty easy and just for this I have put convoy mode on. Um, so that's about all there is to it. We want to start off at nearest or next closest. Um, and one of the setting I want to check, I do have a variable bale capacity mod installed and up here and you'll see I've got it set to 20,000. Simply for the fact that this field's so big and I don't want too many bales that it's going to cause big issues with lag or anything like that. Uh, I could only imagine how many bales there'd be if we did them in the standard size. So we are using that as well. But anyhow, there I think I've got everything set up there. Uh, I'll just quickly click through again and make sure we're all okay. Uh, but I think we're all good to go. So, we'll fire this one off. You'll get everything unfolded. And he's away. So if we just tab through to the next two, we'll go to the middle one first. And again, you'll just see the only difference, center. Everything else, all exactly the same. Off they go. And likewise on this one, right. Here is waypoint. And unfolded it and off they go. So we'll just uh, hang out with this guy for a little bit. And watch what happens. That's a one whole lap of the field complete. You should see now these tractors should start to follow the same lands that the uh, combines did. There we go, that guy's going down left hand side, the next one should turn down and go right, uh, down centre and we will go right. But uh, just have a quick look here on our stats page. 91 bales on that lap. So that's uh, a fair few bales. Interestingly enough, too, just looking at how much we've harvested as hectares, 812 hectares in those two fields. Uh, acres, sorry. 812 acres in those two fields. So a uh, pretty big area. Anyhow, we'll leave these guys going now because if we don't start getting some bales collected, uh, we're going to run out of time. So let's go and get that started. And here we are, our bale collectors. So... Three fast tracks, 8330, the bigger of the fast tracks that are the base game models, and the Anderson Stack Pro uh, loaders. Capacity of 16 bales on each, so uh, we'll be able to pick up a fair few bales with that. So we'll go get these into the field. Uh, 
what I need to do first, so we're going to use course play for bail collection. So uh, I need to go and set that course up first, so I'll take one of them, I'll set that up, and uh, talk you through that process. Alright, here we are, we are out in the field, I'm actually around the back side, gone through the barn, comes off the back of the yard, and I'm going to use this as our point where we're going to return to. Uh, so basically the course you record is not the field, it course play will automatically detect where bales are on the field and run to those. This is for getting the bales out of the field and stacked, loaded, sold, depending on what you wanted to do with them. Now we are going to stack the bales in a place where an auto load truck and trailer unit can come along the side, pick those up and run them down to the sale point. Uh, so the first part is to get this all set up. Now we need to know firstly down, so down the bottom here, we'll look across the bottom, mode here, if I click off it, so collect or wrap bales, we want to be on that. Now this map doesn't have very well defined field edges, so what we've needed to do is actually calculate the field path and then we can add it. So I've already done that, it says override, but we'll override field path 6, field edge 6. So now under here we have the option of field 6. So that t is telling the tractor to go and collect bales off that field margin or within that field boundary. Now what we're going to do is record our path to the point where we want to unload the bales. And because we've got the stacker, we're going to have a point where we drive in, back up, stack them, and then drive out again. Now the reason for that is that the course plate detects the stacks behind you, so you can back up and stack multiple in a row. So I'm going to come around this way. The reason I'm coming around this way will become evident once you see where our trucks are going to be running, but we're running a similar path to the direction the trucks will run once I set that up. We want to come right around here. Now, just to be precise, stop there. Now we need to change to reverse. And what I now want to do very carefully is create a nice straight path back parallel to where we've come. Obviously not in a way that we're going to crash into it. And we want to get that turned as quickly as we can and go straight back. Now the reason I want to go straight back is so that when this drives forward after dropping off a load of bales, it's not going to knock it off. So we'll stop there, we don't want to get too far back and have the course on the way in cut the corner. And at this point we want to set an unload point. This is telling course play to unload the bales there. Now we want to take the backwards driving off. Now there, right, that's gone. And now we're going back to forwards. And so we spun around like that. Our forwards course should take us back out to the field. Careful not to overlap, just in case there was another loading coming in. So we'll just go out a little bit, and that's the end. So then we want to finish that. Now I'm just going to quickly save this and hope it's correct, but that's field 6 bail. On. I'm going to call it offload, that's really what we're going to do. So there we have, that's done. Now there's nothing really left for it but to tell that to drive course. And you'll see there. It's gone ahead and detected the closest bale, which is fortunately right there. So we'll just watch this for a little bit, let them get a few bales loaded up. Uh, the downside to course play is a, a timing thing. It doesn't keep moving while it's stacking the bale on the machine. Obviously if you were doing this yourself, you'd because it'd pick the bale up and then keep on driving. Uh, course play does wait there for the bale to be in position. So it does take a little bit longer, but the trade-off is I can have three of these going, or multiple of these going at one time. In my case I'm going to have three. So you'll see, 
And we'll, so we'll just watch this, put it on a little bit of a time lapse for a minute and watch them go and get a full load. go just uh, getting the last of the bales so they should finish loading that up and start to head back to get these unloaded so let's go see how this works out all right so here we go we're pulling into the start of the course for offloading this should follow around the path that we uh, created just a little bit ago you can still even see the wheel tracks all right and this is the nervous point how is it going to go with backing up and taking the course to offload that I gave it. Oh, it's struggling. It hasn't corrected back the other way. It might have been my error in turning too tightly. It seems to have sorted itself out. Just about at the trigger point. Now what you'll notice is that the uh, unload point's actually not where I backed up to. It's the course point that was created at the back of the tractor. So it hasn't gone back as far as I had uh, intended it for it to. So just bear that in mind if you're making your course. That that point is actually around about where the drawbar of the uh, wagon connects to the tractor. And they carried on going backwards for a little bit. Again, I'm not sure if that was an error I made in how I created the course, but... Fingers crossed our stack stays standing. Alright. Well it's worked. It wasn't pretty. Uh, we'll see how the next few go. But let's see uh, if this gets all out properly. Here we are. Back entering the field. And getting unfolded. And they will now head off to find the next bales to load. Right, well we'll uh, go and hop in the other JCBs and get that all started, because this seems to be working reasonably well. Alright, so we're in the next JCB, just going to set this up, so just the same as we've done before, to find the field edge, we can load the bale offload course, you can see there it's actually brought up that point just behind us, so that must all be going well. So I could probably tell it to drive course, but I think I'll drive it into the field just to make sure it gets done properly. But here we are, out in the field. We will go to play and we want to start the course at collect or wrap bales. There we go. And they will now head off and find the nearest bale. And last thing is just to set the last one up the same. Alright, and there we go, the third one heading off now too. So uh, there we go, we've got three wagons out trying to collect bales. Alright, so there goes one wagon, here comes another. I have slightly adjusted the course. Uh, it hasn't backed up quite as far as I thought it might have, or had wanted it to. But I have nosed into the bushes as well, but that's just so I can get things straighter. But I'm hoping I've taken out the little kink I had at the end a little bit neater. And instead of backing up once it's unloaded, it drives forward. So let's just wait and see how this one goes. So far so good. Let's just hope it's stopped far enough away that when it tips up it doesn't bump the other stack too much. And there we go, drove out forwards. That's exactly what we want it to do. So that's uh, that's good. Right, well I'm going to leave them going and set up the third part of the puzzle, which involves those truck and trailer units over there. Alright, so we're here in the Kenworth and we've got these uh, bale trailers set up as a road train. The three large bale trailers. And so what I'm going to do is try and set up an auto drive route to load those bales onto the trailer automatically using the uh, auto load function and then deliver them to the sell point. So we already have a route around here which takes... Uh, what's happened to that guy? Why has he gone and done something like that? Alright, so I'm not too sure what was happening there. We've had a little bit of a whoopsie with one of the uh, loading wagons. That doesn't stop us doing what we're going to do. So as I was saying, we are going to set an auto drive route up to pull up beside on the left hand side of these uh, 
bales, which you'll now start to understand why my course plate for the bales went on the right hand side. So we've got the uh, editor up here, so I'm just going to start recording. Now it's picked the, probably not the ideal one we want to trigger off, we want to probably come off this one here. So let's start recording there. Okay, I can adjust that. And uh, head down beside these bales. Obviously we want to stop where the wheels aren't, and that looks like a pretty good spot right there. I'm just going to pull forward, actually let's use that point we've got there as a reference, so this is going to be our bale collection, let's call it truck bale collection, we know that it was the truck collecting it. And now if we keep on recording, we're going to take this back around to connect up to our main roots in the yard so that it can head down towards the uh, cell points. Just overlap that so we make sure we get a decent swing. If we try and get onto that next waypoint, there we go. Stop the recording there. It's connected even better. Right, so let's just go drive that course a little again so we can just adjust a few of those points. Alright, so I just want to change where, I'm going to bring that one off there to there, get rid of these couple, delete that one there, alright now to test this, make sure we've got auto load turned on and the correct, we want large square bales and Check whether we need to change that for each trailer. Selected large square bales there, large square bales there, and we want to turn it on, which is U. Turn on for that one, turn on for that one, and it sounds like we've got a. Here we go, so he's managed to make his way past. Alright. Horses his way through that collapsed load of bales. So now if we take truck bale collection and send this man to the, that point, he should pick up these bales on the way past. Here we go, and they're all gone in. We're going to have to manually adjust this a little bit, I think, for our loading. Uh, we don't have a point from there to there, so we'll just fill that one in. So I'm just going to use the truck to pick all these bales up and uh, make some more fine tuning. Then we'll send it down to the cell point and see if we can set up the unload down that end. Alright, we're just down here at the shop uh, cell points. And I'm just going to figure out exactly where our cell points are on here. Because I'm not actually sure whether it's just a drive-through cell point. Uh, or whether we have to do something to unload the bales. We may have to actually unload the bales to the uh, deck. So if I just see there, if I go Y, there we go, it's auto unloaded them and sold a few, but not all of them. Maybe we weren't quite in the right spot to sell them. Maybe we had to be a little bit further close, a bit closer. So if I just turn auto load back on, pick all those back up. So I'm just going to draw, record a path to this point And just when the truck gets here, it means we'll have to come down and tell it to unload, which isn't quite as I would have liked. Uh, that's okay. So we'll just connect this back. This is the end of the path. So to connect that back up to head out that way. Like that. Then we'll go back and pack the rest of our trailer up. And we'll record the rest of the path to get over to the cell point. There we go. And we'll give this a name. Fail. Fail. Create that there. Right there we are, we've got it heading to the bale cell point now. It does show we've got straw on, uh, the straw bales down in the bottom right hand corner. So we'll just watch and see what happens.
Then we'll go back and sort out the fast tracks and the baler that seem to be having some problems. Right, so it hasn't quite worked. We're just going to have to have this as a point that we get to and then use the unload option to do it. I'm guessing it might be these trailers, but it might not be. Uh, I'll have to do a little bit more work on that, I think. All right, there we go. We've managed to get it all offloaded. So let's just tell the truck to go back to the bale collection point and we'll meet it back there. I was checking back in on the um, bale wagons. It looks like I've managed to tweak the course. I've re-recorded it. Uh, and it seems to be working better. We'll uh, need to tidy up that one stack that's just standing there in the middle of nowhere for whatever reason it got unloaded there by course play. But uh got two stacks here already. Seem to be sitting there nice and neatly. They haven't been bumped into or anything. And this guy looks like he's backing up perfectly to add to that. Ideally, uh, if we have a decent amount of stacks there, when the truck pulls in past that, it should pick all of those up and then stop at the uh, weight point. There we go. It all looks to be going well for a nice, neat and tidy offload. Alright, and they'll go out and pick some more up. So we'll just uh, wait here for the truck to arrive back and see what happens. And if we're right on cue, here is the truck coming in now. So let's just see as it goes past these. I've checked the auto load is turned on on the trailers. Hopefully if everything is close enough. Here comes another bale trailer. Is he going to sneak past? Perfect. Look at that. And there's bales going on. So they've all gone. We're going to stand very still and let them both go either side of us. I couldn't have scripted that any better if I tried. There we go. He'll get to his stop point and the bale trailer here will come past and unload. And once it unloads, the bales should automatically go into one of the back trailers. Alright, there we go. They're off, back off to the field. All unloaded. Bales in the back of the trailer. So, uh, it's going pretty well. Not quite as smooth as I had hoped. Uh, a few little teething issues, particularly with getting this uh, bale course for backing in here done. Everything out in the field, apart from a few clashes where they fight over the same bales, has uh, gone pretty smoothly. But, uh, yeah, all in all, it's demonstrated again the use of course play and auto drive together can almost completely automated task. Uh, all I've had to do for this one, apart from having to rescue a few machines where they've uh, clashed, would be the loading for the auto load trailer and the unloading at the other end. If I only had a single trailer, uh, it'd be much easier to get it in the trigger. I could have two or three of these running and uh, then I wouldn't have to move it like I'm going to have to now. But uh, yeah, apart from that, and having to unload it at the other end to sell them, it's uh, it's all gone pretty well. Now you can use these if uh, you wanted to run, and obviously with the distance we're going, I'm, that's why I chose not to. But you can use course play to unload these uh, straight into a sell point. And I'll link you to a video Mighty Mike Farms has done on that, uh, which was most helpful for me. I'll link in the description to his video on uh, how to do that and he demonstrates it really well on how to use that uh, bale function as well as for collecting bales also for wrapping bales so if you're making silage you can automate the wrapping process so plenty you can do uh, it's a great new feature to course play and uh, one I'm looking forward to using again now the other thing to remember is I'm doing this on a big scale you know three of everything um, it would be much simpler if you were if you were doing it with a single baler, single combine, single truck. Um, everything would be much simpler, in my opinion. There'd be less chance for clash, less chance for trying to coordinate these things quite as much as I have. But there it is. So uh, I'm going to wrap things up there. Let the uh, balers carry on for a bit longer, and let the uh, wagons carry on. 
and next time we're going to get into a bit of tillage and possibly some seeding as well so uh yeah the next stage of uh, how to use auto drive and course play to try and maximize the benefits for that but anyhow that is all for me i'll catch you in the next one